Another aspect of these main street plans is to widen the sidewalks, because as you can see here, when there's two people walking, it's a little too close for comfort. Anyone who's ever been in a band, when they got their start like this, just playing songs by themselves in their bedrooms. But for these musicians, they put in the work, and their shows now look a little bit more like this. The murder trial for Lori Vallow started Monday in Boise. The opening statement for the prosecution said the case was about money, sex, and power. Vallow is being charged with murder, conspiracy to commit murder, and grand theft in connection to the death of Vallow's two youngest children and her husband's ex-wife. WSU offers a multitude of recreational athletic opportunities for students, including kayak lessons. Our reporter Alfonso Valdivia has more information. Well, thanks for that, Alfonso. How about those Mariners, those guys? I mean, I'm personally looking forward to see what Robbie Ray can do on the mound. He was a little bit of a mixed bag last season, but I've got high hopes. I think he can turn it around. Hi, two tickets for a little shop of horse, please. I created this thing and asked if I could have it here, but I've done it here now three times total. It refers to the Palouse cult film revival, a film festival that's essentially dedicated to appreciating awesome movies. We kicked it off with Little Shop of Horrors. Next week, it's Romy and Michelle, then Mars Attacks, and then we always do a grand finale of The Room. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Fully interactive props. Um, and sometimes we bring actors in too. Eric Billings founded Palouse Cult Film Revival in 2018, and this is the third time the festival has come to the historical Kenworthy Performing Arts Center. While today it hosts events like the Palouse Cult Film Revival, this wasn't always the case. The Kenworthy here has had a deep and rich history, having been around for over 100 years. Milburn Kenworthy bought the theater in 1926 and used it for vaudeville and later silent films. The Kenworthy was Moscow's premier movie theater until 1979, when the stage was converted into a coffee house. This didn't last long, however, as the theater was converted back and started showing movies again in the late 80s. Live theater came back for the first time in 2000 with none other than Little Shop of Horrors. Was there any sort of intention behind playing that movie as the first one tonight? So, no, but I think the coincidence is really cool. Today, the Kenworthy shows movies or performances on nearly a nightly basis. But more than that, the community truly cares about it. I love the atmosphere, I love the community, I love everything about it. I love the movies they show, yeah. Well, I think it's the, the atmosphere of like putting on movies that you just don't get to see in this setting a lot. Um, <laughs> this one particular, just because I adore Little Shop, it's my favorite thing. I've been coming here for on and off for a couple years, but like pretty consistently to most movies this year. So I don't know, this place has like such a cool history, and it was just renovated, and so it's definitely, it's a very special place to like come and hang out with friends and see new cool things. The Kenworthy reminds us why we love the movie theater experience and is well worth checking out. With Maroon News 8, I'm Danny Flynn. It seemed like it was pretty cool, uh, everything around here. It was a really fun night. Um, I had a lot of fun being here, and the music was cool to listen to. I'm speaking with my hands a lot right now. Cable 8 Productions and the Student Entertainment Board hosted another successful Battle of the Bands this past Friday, which highlighted some of the incredible talent of local artists while also raising money for a worthy cause. Cable 8 raised $722. All of this money went towards the Cougar Food Pantry, a free resource for students struggling with food insecurity. Anyone who's ever been in a band, when they got their start like this, just playing songs by themselves in their bedrooms. But for these musicians, they put in the work, and their shows now look a little bit more like this. Four bands competed, but only one could win, and after two hours of live music, the winner was announced. Half Step Ahead is comprised of Ben Forbeck on lead guitar and vocals, Tony DeLuca on bass, and guest performer Robbie Walker on drums, who had only practiced with the band twice before the concert. Robbie? Yeah, right? Guest of honor. Guest of honor. Guest of honor. Guest of honor. Originally out of Pennsylvania, Half Step Ahead formed back in 2013 and had nothing but good things to say about the music scene in Pullman. We love it. Like, it's super diverse and, and groovy and, like, a lot of talent. A lot of talent. If you missed their performance, the full concert stream is available on the Cable 8 YouTube channel, and they will be hosting multiple performances in the coming days, including a special-themed performance on Thursday. 
We're playing a Kush 21 in a parking lot for a 420 festival. Uh, at, the next uh, at 420. At 420. And then we actually we have more because it's, I can't remember. Yeah. There's too many. There's this too many this next look. week is going to be insane. With Moreau News 8, I'm Danny Flynn.